Hello, everyone. So I'm going to preview Chicago and Minnesota for the week four matchup. That is, that's at Soldier Field. So offensively, Chicago's 29th in total offense, 275 yards a game. 29th in passing yards, 178.7 a game. They are tied 20th in sacks allowed, already allowing eight of them through three games. 21st in rushing yards with only 96.3. Tied for 15th in yards per carry, though, at 4.3. They are tied for 20th and third down percentage at 39%, and 26th in points per game at 16.7. Defensively, we all know this is where Chicago kind of makes the money, so to speak. They are 8th in total defense, 313.7 yards a game allowed, 14th in passing yards allowed at 245.0. They are 5th in sacks with 11, 5th in rushing yards allowed at 68.7. Fourth in yards per carry allowed with only 3.1. And third in third down defensive percentage, only 23% so far. Third in points per game allowed as well, only allowing 13 on average. So their injury report's actually a little bit lengthy. You have Taylor Gabriel, he's out with a concussion. And uh, Nichols, an interior defensive lineman, he's out with a hand injury. Then you got Pinero, who's their kicker. He's still dealing with a right knee issue. It's kind of a pinched nerve kind of thing. Last time I saw that. And both Akeem Hicks and Kyle Long are questionable. And probably both kind of game time decisions, which could be a big thing for us if even one of the guys is out, especially Hicks. And Trey Burton, he's questionable with a groin, but he was downgraded from full practice to limited practice. Kind of thinking that's probably closer to a precautionary thing. So I feel like Trey Burton might actually be a go here. But if they have two game time decisions along both fronts, and that would be a big deal to Minnesota if both can't go. Or even if one can't go, it's still kind of a big deal in what's probably going to be a defensive slugfest type of game. So, ah, Minnesota, though, on offense, they are 15th in total offense with 358.3 yards a game, 31st in passing yards at 164.7 yards a game, tied first in sacks allowed with two, a little bit swayed since they've only thrown it 63 times, but that's whatever. They are second in rushing yards out at 193.7, third in yards per carry allowed at five allowed in gaining yards per carry at 5.6, 13th in third down percentage at 44%, and seventh in points per game with 26. Defensively, they are 12th in total defense, allowing 327.3 yards a game, 11th in passing yards allowed with 225.7, and tied sixth. In sacks with 10. 13th in rushing yards allowed at 101.7, but they are tied for 18th in yards per carry allowed at 4.4. And in third down percentage, they are 6th with only allowing 29%. And 5th in points per game allowed at 15.7. And Minnesota's injury report, a lot smaller. You only have three guys on this. Klein's out with a concussion. Brothers, he's out with a hamstring and a wrist. And Alexander is questionable with his elbow, but he was actually upgraded to a full practice, so he's probably likely to return. Josh Klein being out would, I think, under normal circumstances, well, for normal teams, so to speak, along the offensive front, having a starting offensive lineman is a real big issue. But our team's a little weird just because... Well, the drop-off from starter to backup isn't that far of a drop-off, which I think is more of a testament to the depth than it is the starters, where I think we have pretty low-caliber starters to begin with. So when one goes down and Dozier comes in, it's almost a wash. He might be a little worse, but it's not like a noticeable difference, really. So kind of a double-edged sword there. Technically have good depth, but... Do you only have good depth because your starters are not that great to begin with? But it is what it is. 
So now we come into more of just my thoughts. And even if Akeem Hicks is going to play, I wouldn't give up on the run game, even though that makes it significantly harder to run because he's kind of like an immovable object at times. And you just don't want to become one-dimensional against this team because all of a sudden you become one-dimensional with throwing and get Khalil Mack up in there, some Leonard Floyd, maybe some Goldman, Keem Hicks just bull rushing through. It's not a good look. It's not a good look. So you want to prevent that, but this at the same time could be a game where we rely on Cousins a little bit more instead of just throwing the 21 per times a game they average. They might go over that, I would assume, this week, just because, well, running the ball is going to be a lot harder this week. It's going to be a real test for that front, really, just at least in running the ball, because Minnesota has one of the better rushing offense so far to this short season, and they're going up against one of the best run defenses. So it'll be interesting to see how they deal with a real test And I do think you can throw on this team if you can actually buy time, which is the hardest part, because Buster's screen is a significant downgrade from Bryce Callahan. And as far as the PFF goes, I know some people hate it, but right now Buster's screen in the slot has a 55.0 PFF grade for this season. Last season, Bryce Callahan logged a 81.4 for them in that same position. So, Adam Thielen being our slot receiver, majority of the time, you could potentially see if they can find ways to get a one-on-one matchup there. I imagine that's where they're going to look to go for their bigger chunk plays when they need to try to make a play. I imagine that's the idea anyway. So obviously you can't turn the ball over, and that's kind of how this team gets you a little bit. Talking to Kirk here with his, you know, weird brain fart moments sometimes and his fumbling problems, which, yeah, that's not good. Which brings me to another thing. I never want to see Khalil Mack at any point in this game one-on-one. We kind of saw that a little bit last year. It's not the most fun thing. He literally picked up and threw Riley Reef. Do not put him one-on-one with anyone. Chip him, double him, do what you need to do, but do not, for the love of God, put him one-on-one with anyone. And also do not get restless if it is a boring game. If it's one of those defensive games that everyone just perceives as boring, do not get restless. I feel like that's where a lot of teams kind of struggle against Chicago. They're kind of done playing this whole, okay, I'm not playing like it's 1973 anymore. We're going to try to actually get yards. And then that's when you mess up. So be okay if the game's 10 to 6 in the third quarter. Be okay with that because you want to try to force them to make the mistakes. Do not make a mistake in that kind of situation. Because I don't think you can necessarily win the game, but you can certainly lose the game and those kind of things. And I think that's where a lot of teams tend to screw up against the Bears. Especially when you're on the road in Chicago at Soldier Field. Now, defensively, I feel like Minnesota's been kind of disappointing against the run so far this year. Allowing 4.4 yards per carry. But for this week, they really need to try to hold strong and change that narrative. As they are, the Bears are averaging 4.3 yards a carry. I know they don't have that many total rushing yards, but they are getting effective runs. What does that mean? Well, they can be balanced. You need to take that away from the Bears and force Mitchell Trubisky to beat you. I think that kind of game plan has been known for a little bit now. And I really think you need to be doubling Allen Robinson as well, just so you can force Mitchell Trubisky to beat you with somebody that's not Allen Robinson because he does tend to get some tunnel vision on him at times. So even if you are just doubling him, you could have good coverage and force him into a mistake potentially, just because he does like occasionally forcing it to Allen Robinson. Now, you do need to rush Trubisky rather carefully. So 
Yeah, because he will run and he will hurt you with the run. So you need to try to make him beat you with his arm, which isn't all the time that consistent. So another thing just to look out for is Tariq Cohen. He hasn't had that breakout game yet this year. Don't let this be that game. The only two real offensive weapons with both Taylor Gabriel out and, well, really just Taylor Gabriel. If you have him out and then you double Allen Robinson, the only other weapon you really have to worry about getting behind you, I would say, is probably Tariq Cohen in the flats. He, he's really fast. He's really elusive. Do not let him break for those 80-yard touchdowns that we saw a little bit last year. And you need to be able to create turnovers in this game. Whoever creates them, whoever wins the turnover battle in this game is likely to win. So if you can do that, that would be great. Because I also don't think we'll be driving on Chicago that much. Like, I wouldn't be betting on us driving 80 yards each time we get the ball. That's a little asinine. So even without Hicks, I don't see that happening. So you need to create turnovers, create the short field. And hopefully that that goes. And special teams, you need to make sure you don't mess up. Because this is those kind of games, once again, where one mistake could end up losing you the game. Because points are likely to be at a premium. Like, one team allows 15 points a game. The other one allows 13. So, do not do anything stupid there. If you have a field goal attempt, make the kick. If you have to punt... Don't get a block. Don't shank it. Those kind of things. And obviously no muff punts or kickoff fumble kind of things. You just have to not mess up there. Just be status quo. And my prediction for this game, I do have Minnesota losing this game uh, 20 to 10. Just because until Minnesota proves they can actually win these types of games, I cannot take them to win these types of games. We kind of like, all last year, we were like, oh, is Kirk Cousins going to do it this time? He never did. So he didn't even do it this year in Green Bay. So until this is a thing that they prove they can actually go out and do, I cannot possibly expect them to win these types of big games. So I do expect it to be close, though, for the most part, until probably a late turnover decides it pretty late. So I would like to know what you guys think down in the comments below. Liking and subscribing helps. And until next time, I bid y'all adieu.